I think it was 1990. There was one year, 1997, 1998. There was one year that was particularly cold. Um, and I, as I recall, it was, was it Mount Pinatuba? There was a volcanic event of some sort. My recollection was 98 or 99. I was wondering why Myron was saying in the last 15 years, we haven't seen much warming. Because, we've, you know, it's been steadily going up since, since the 1950s, real substantially. And so if you'd had one particularly cold year as a result of a volcanic event, you know, throwing a lot of ash into the sky, reflecting the sunlight off, so it's called the albedo effect, um, reducing the temperature of the Earth. If you had one particularly cold year, if you went back to that, if you started counting from that cold year and then you took the warmer years since then, I mean, you know, 11 out of the 12 last years have been the hottest. Each one has been the hottest year in the history, as far as we can tell, of the human race. Certainly of the modern human race, the modern, you know, keeping track of temperatures. But I had, and, and I hadn't heard that, you know, oh, in the last 15 years before. And so I'm guessing that there's, that, that uh, we're dealing with some... But on the uh, A, B, have you, have you seen the ice creeping across the ground in, in uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin, in Minnesota and some of the Northern Plains states? There's a video. The AP has a video out. Um, they're over at Raw Story. You can see it. It's like, you know, this two foot or foot t tall layer of ice just moving along at about, uh, you know, a foot every, uh, a couple of feet a minute or a couple of feet an hour, rather. And sounding like a freight train moving across this yard in Minnesota. And it's because, apparently, because the, the Arctic ice is, you know, we've lost over a million square miles of Arctic ice from what's normally there this time of year. And as a result of that, you know, the, 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 instead of reflecting the sunlight back up and out, uh, the ocean is absorbing that heat and it's staying warm, and that is creating higher low-pressure systems up there that didn't used to exist that are pushing, apparently, the, the, the jet stream south and, and keeping the cold air farther south. And that's why, you know, we haven't, we're just starting to have spring here in Washington, D.C., and normally it would be in the 80s or 90s here this time of year. I'm wearing a sweater today. I mean, it's, it's 59 degrees outside right now. So it's not, I mean, yes, the, the planet itself is warming. We have 5% more moisture, more water vapor in the air, so the storms are more violent events, more precipitation. Where there's precipitation, more aridity, more dryness, more desert where there's desert. This, uh, the IPCC says uh, the rising temperatures put 20 to 30 percent of plant and animal species at risk of extinction. I mean, that's no small thing. That's, 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 that's a very, very big deal. The World Bank said we're going to have severe crop yield reductions as a consequence of this. And we're already seeing that last year. I mean, you know. Not, and not just last year, each of the last 11 of the last 12 years. Here's another way that the Wall Street Journal was incredibly disingenuous in this. And it's just, it's, it's really quite mind-boggling. In their op-ed, they said CO2 levels, current CO2 levels are low by the standards of geologic and plant evolution, evolutionary history. In other words, there was a time, in fact, they say, you know, that there was a time when carbon dioxide levels were 3,000 parts per million. Right now we're hitting 400. Yeah, that was the Paleogene period. That was 65 million years ago. And, you know, if you want to go back to that, I mean, that, that was 65 million years ago was when a, an asteroid hit the Earth. Uh, killed off the dinosaurs. Apparently, you know, kicked up a lot of carbon dioxide. I, you know, I don't know the exact mechanism by which this happened, but since humans came out of the trees or out of the seas or wherever we came out of, 
the seizes the uh, hairless ape theory for those of you interested in it's a fascinating hypothesis that the reason that we're the only primate that can give birth in water standing in water women can give birth and the baby you know the the placenta doesn't immediately disconnect it's it's attached for 5 or t 5 or 10 minutes after the birth or can be and so the baby can literally float underwater without breathing as long as the placenta is still connected the baby's getting oxygen through the umbilical cord and uh, we're the only mammal that can do that and we're also the only mammal that has no hair on our, you know, over most of our bodies. We're the hairless ape. And so why is that? Well, this is one hypothesis that at some point in human history, and keep in mind, human history is only 165,000 years old, that at some point there was probably some sort of catastrophic event and, and one that's, that's been uh, pointed to. I write about this in my book, The Edison Gene, actually. It's a chapter about this. Uh, happened, as I recall, about 90 million years ago, when there may have been as few as 40,000 humans on the entire planet. And the only ones who survived, because the, the, the land mass, everybody was living in Africa, and the land mass was just basically on fire because of the, this atmospheric change. And the only people who survived were those who were literally standing in the water, in the ocean water, at the, at the edge of the uh, continental land mass for maybe a generation or two. It's called a bottleneck event, using Stephen Jay Gould's hypothesis of how evolution happens. And so all the rest of us, all of our aunts and uncles and cousins and brothers and sisters, they all died off, and just the hairless ones who could give birth underwater survived, who were probably mutants, you know, or variations. It's an interesting theory, the hairless. but in any case, we have, as a human race, never seen 400 parts per million carbon in our atmosphere, ever. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. And where this is going to lead us is the subject of a lot of speculation, and most of it is pretty grim stuff. We need to take this seriously. 